You can campaign or just resign and let someone else take the job. There are a lot of people living paycheck to paycheck in Florida as well. They're looking for a senator that will fight for them each and every day. The only reason why you're doing it now is because we're running for the same position and someone has convinced you that attacking me is going to help you. All right, well, that was one of last night's most talked about moments, at least by the pundits. So what do voters think this morning? Here with us is Paul DiBartolo. He's a Donald Trump and Ben Carson supporter. Interesting way to hedge your bets. Uh, John Burnett, an undecided Republican voter and former candidate for New York City comptroller. And Maricely Velez uh, Delgado. She's Delgado, I should say. She's a former assistant to Governor George Pataki for Hispanic Affairs, who is also an undecided Republican voter. Great to have all of you with us. Maricely. You're undecided. You voted for George Pataki. Why don't you support him? Well, you know, there are so many great candidates, and I feel as a voter last night, we were kind of all over the place. I would have liked a little bit more sincerity on some of the questions. You know, Senator Ted Cruz didn't even answer the question on the debt ceiling. So I wanted more substance and more information about how small business owners will thrive in this new American century. Interesting. So you blame the candidates, not the moderators. You know, the moderators are getting some heat for their questions, but you wanted the candidates to answer more thoroughly. Absolutely. Okay, John, who, what did you take away from it last night? Who do you think won? Well, I, I think the, the loser in it is definitely the moderators. I think the winner, uh, in my opinion, Rubio walked away talking to the uh, broad-based demographic. When he said that uh, he had to explain to his wife why, why a lady named Sally May is taking $1,000 every month from his paycheck, I think that resonated with a lot of young voters. You liked that moment. Um, yeah. Okay, Paul, so you support uh, Trump and Absolutely. Carson. They were not in the limelight last night. What did you think of their performance? No, I think uh, I was very happy with their performance. I think what they were trying to do is kind of just lay back, um, for lack of a better word, just chill out and just make sure that they didn't... Um, Mess it up. Mess it up. <laughs> you know, basically, uh, they, they're so far ahead in the polls that I just feel like they uh, they don't really, they didn't need to be really outspoken last night. They didn't need to make a mark like a lot of the other uh, uh, candidates did. They needed to uh, try to, you know, basically make a mark. You know? Marcelli, some people felt that this was a make or break moment for Jeb Bush. How do you think he did? Absolutely. I'm, as a former governor, he has a great track record. And I could clearly see last night that there is some contention between him and Rubio. Yeah, they were arguing. You. I mean, they, they were friends, we've heard. And one was sort of a mentor, Jeb was sort of a mentor to Marco, but you felt tension last there night. There was definitely tension. You could see it. And, you know, I like that Rubio bounced back and he said, you know what? I didn't know there was a line to run. You know, he's a young guy, but I think he's capable. He's ready, willing, and able. He has a vision for this new American century. And, you know, the Sun Centennial endorsed him, and now they want to kick him out. You know, obviously, he's running for president. He's not going to be in Florida a lot of the time. He's going to be traveling. He's going to be fundraising, and he's going to try to do the best he can in this so race. So you liked his response to missing votes. Absolutely. Um, John, what did you think about Jeb Bush's performance? I think Jeb, uh, this is the third debate, and I don't think Jeb showed up yet. So I think uh, going forward, I think it's going to hinder his fundraising, perhaps. Uh, I don't think he, he didn't answer the question. Why are you answering, answering a question, being proud of your fantasy football uh, picks, when you should have just deflected and went to your record in your tax plan? Oh, so you, you thought that he, that he shouldn't have said, I think that it should be regulated. He should have just dismissed with that question. He should have said, look, we need to be, he should have pivoted and talk, talked about his record went into what his plan is for America. He talks about getting to 4% growth, but I don't think he's actually given enough details on how he needs to get there. Paul, we only have a few seconds left. Anybody John. drops out after last night? How do you think the field changes? I Actually, last night, I don't think the field changed at all. I think everybody kind of held their own, and uh, I don't think there was any movement at all, to be honest with you. Okay, there you at go. At this point. Uh, it's great to get the pulse of real voters. Uh, Maricelli, John, Paul, thanks so much for coming yeah, on. Great to talk to you guys. We'll talk to you again in the race. Thank you. Thank you for having us and engaging the voters. Our pleasure. Thanks so much for watching. Newsroom with Carol Costello picks up right after this quick break.